to be okay. There it goes. Oh man, it's great to be back. So, um, yeah. Corey, I kind of sprung this on you. <laughs> I haven't been able to do a live in like a couple of weeks. I've been at FinCon, I've been uh doing stuff around the house. It's been a couple of weeks, so I'm getting back into the schedule of things. I'm also um building out uh special gifts for the group here so i mean that's taking a lot of my time i've been doing the youtube so i'm glad that i could come back uh, with a powerful uh topic uh mm -hmm. and like you guys I, like i've been talking in the group all week Corey's here we're going to talk about minimalism and this is one of the topics that we kind of been posting and people want to know kind of information about but i like to bring people on who are in that space who really identify with it and one thing that you'll see about Corey is like he he integrated it into his lifestyle uh and how i met Corey was he's on youtube uh fabulous channel uh came across one of his videos and then i, I went down the rabbit hole of course uh, and i i started to learn <laughs> everything you put out there i started to learn I'm like oh he do this he did all that but um what i liked about it was i kind of I, I have i know i have minimal minimalistic behaviors but i also know um, there is a lot to that particular niche uh, yep. of people and how they believe and how they act. And with you being someone who say, hey, I, I live this style, and but this is how I'm going to do it, and I, I do it my way. And um, the one thing I like is your authenticity of, like, you know who you are. You know what I mean? You, you're like, hey, this is what I'm going to do. <laughs> if, if the founders call me, I'm like, hey, bro, <laughs> this is what I got for you. I, I, I loved it. You know what I mean? And you was you were straight up front with it. You was like, oh, I know what it's supposed to do, but this is what I'm doing. Uh, right, so right. we want to talk a, a little bit about that. Um, <laughs> like I said, he, he's on YouTube. We'll drop his link. Um, Corey, if you have any uh, things out that you want, resources that you want us uh want the people to take a look at definitely we'll get those links so we can share them as well uh if you're watching this on youtube take a moment subscribe take a moment uh i definitely have Corey's channel link down below you'll like it just like i like it i like it on saturday mornings while i'm doing my run <laughs> but uh, you'll like it. it it's that type of content so it's very very digestible but yeah he he uh he got his job he's doing the youtube but he's uh he does integrate this minimalism in his lifestyle uh and go ahead if you could take a moment kind of share uh, a little bit about yourself yeah yeah so like he said my name is corey jones um i'm originally from south carolina but i live in atlanta georgia right now i've uh, been here for about three three years yeah three years now um and yeah you know i operate a youtube channel you know definitely start off as a hobby and then just started incorporating different things about my life and and giving advice to those who who want to listen to me so you know i appreciate jonathan for tuning into the channel week in week, week out and <laughs> important you know um but yeah you know i started the minimalism journey in uh i would say 2020 so during the pandemic i was like you know i need to try something different try something new and kind of similar probably to similar to some of you all you go down a rabbit hole of looking at minimalism and how to get started and then i was looking i was like okay i can do that okay well i can't do that yeah. <laughs> I was writing down what I will do and what I won't do and just right. making it into my own. So, you know, I believe that minimalism is all about how you bring it to your lifestyle versus how someone else brings it to their lifestyle. So it's kind of like a tool, you know, like if you pick up a camera, Jonathan, you're going to use the camera differently than how I use it. You know, you're going to change the settings and tweak it a little bit. And then I'm going to tweak it to how I like it. And that's how I see minimalism. It's not like a one size fits all. You kind of go into it, do a little decluttering, seeing what you can get rid of, seeing what you can bring into your life and figure out that aspect of minimalism and how it could benefit your life for the, for the better. So um, that's what I did. It took some trial and error and I'm still going along. So I'm not perfect either, but you know, I try to make sure that I'm authentic and genuine with my approach to minimalism and not try to seem like I'm a perfectionist and, you know, I, I don't have clutter anywhere. Like we all develop clutter as time goes on. We all develop different habits and it's okay to go back and be like, okay, let me rethink about how I 
go about this minimalism journey, even if it's different from when you started. So it's always a process and a continuing process. So um, that's what I try to bring to my channel and to my life. Um, but yeah, you know, happy to be here, happy to be on the show and answer any questions that, that anyone has for sure. So you, uh, like you said, you kind of start to declutter. And one of the things that, uh, or statistics that the minimalist said, the average person has about 366,000 items um, mm. in their home. Um, yeah. And that piece right now, like it was when you hear something like that, when I was looking, I was on the couch when I was looking at the thing and I just started looking around like, is this 366,000? <laughs> like, like you got one paper, you got this. And when you start to think about your, your couch has pillows, and, you know what I'm saying? You got blankets, you got all the different stuff. I'm like, I guess you could accumulate stuff. Um, when you looked at it, and like you said, you was in COVID, what were some of the areas that you could just like quickly identify like, yeah, I, I, I need to clean that up? Yeah, yeah. I, I would say things that I was just holding on to due to like memories. You know, it's a lot of things that we have and we like, you know, when I see that, it's going to remind me that I've been to this place or it's going to remind me of this time. But instead of just keeping it, I just like took a picture of it and just made it digital. So if I ever needed that memory is there, whether it's like an old towel that I had from being a student in college or something like that. <laughs> like, I don't need that sitting there. I could like just take a picture of it and just get rid of in it. In an like, album. Yeah, yeah, have an album, you know? So yeah. like little things like that, I was trying to figure out you know, how can I make things digital when it comes to memories and holding things for sentimental value? But I think a lot of my decluttering came when I looked in my closet. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I was like, wow, you know, a lot of this stuff I have for just in case this time comes. <laughs> just in case I <laughs> just in want case. to invite to an all black party and I want to stunt, I'm aware of this. Like, it's a lot oh, of it's gonna come case. up. <laughs> it's it's a lot of got an all case. black party. <laughs> it is, but you know, it's a lot of just in case items that I had in my closet. And I was like, you know, this can be donated to the homeless, to Goodwill or stuff like that. Yeah. And different things that I had that I was holding on to just because when I bought it, it reminded me of a certain time. So now it's like I have things that I wear that I know I'm going to wear. Like I right. wear either once a week, once every other week, but I don't have anything in my closet where I'm like, I'm keeping that just in case. Because if an all black party come up, <laughs> nine times out of ten, I, I go to the floor and go get me an all black yeah. something all like I don't need to just linger it in my closet anymore, right. waiting for that time to come. So it's like reformatting the way I think about things. And even if I do get invited to all black party, it's probably going to be once a year. Yeah. If that, you know, so right. why do I have to keep it in my closet for a whole year waiting for that time to come? Right. So <laughs> this this little things like that. But it really started with like declutter, decluttering clothes, shoes and like memories that I've been holding on to. Shoes. So did you give away Jay's? Cause I know somebody got boxes. <laughs> no, 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 you ain't no, giving no. them the whole. No, I still the like my J's now. <laughs> I still like my J's, but you know, if they if I wasn't wearing them and you know they beat up and things like that, I'd give them away. But if they still in pristine good condition, and I'll wear them. <laughs> I'm gonna keep them. Well, they gonna be interesting because I mean I'm still putting the the little the little trash thing in the shoe. Like when, after I she use it, 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 it's interesting you went straight to your closet because that's one of the things um over the years. Like I still have the clothes, some of the clothes, some of the business shirts I wear. Those are the same shirts I bought back when I was a young Neo walking around the yard, you know, and you you had to have you had to <laughs> every week for the for the chapter party, you had to have a new shirt. So I was in Express and you know said I didn't bought every color that they had to offer. And so <laughs> I'm like, and then I I figured out back then, probably once I started working like my first little job out of college, I figured out, dang, if I dry clean my stuff, it'll last longer. And so I've always dry clean. But the thing is, I'm like, I've never bought other clothes. Unless my wife go gets it for me, I haven't bought clothes in probably about seven, eight years. And then now with COVID and the pandemic, 
<laughs> working from home, my yeah. whole wardrobe, I didn't somehow, like my wife, we had family meetings <laughs> about, hey, bro, why why you got hoodies and sweats all the time? I'm like, Cause I, I work to try to get comfortable, you know what I mean? But in my comfort level, I've been trying to, I've been trying to be comfortable at the office. You know how hard it is to take a nap in one of those swivel chair things? Like, right, but, right. But the point is, I realized the utility I don't, you know, say every time I bought, I did buy something, I always took look something in my closet and gave it away. So mm -hmm. I'm cycling stuff out constantly, kind of like you. Um, and that just became the rhythm. But yeah, I really just don't buy clothes like that. And then people ask me, I'm like, well, dog, where are you going? I tell my wife, I'm like, well, you're on, you're on a video, you know, what I mean? like you dressing right. like <laughs> you dressing for me, <laughs> like you can, you can wear like. I know what you look like. I married you. We right. good. You know what I mean? So, uh, right. <laughs> yeah. So going out and buying clothes, like, for the everyday, that's just not something I'm going to uh, do. But I know a lot of people, when you talk about where minimalism can affect your budget, that's a that's a big category. And like you said, how, much, how many things are you holding on? That memory thing is big because my wife is big. She's like, oh, it's memory. I was like, dude, you could put that in a book. I'm going to probably tell her, take a picture of that Joker. We're going to get you a whole new album. Everything that's for memory, we're going to mark the book memories. And yeah. you can you can just go through. But having it here, it's taking up space. It's, it it's clutter. Crazy. You know, so so the, the clothes thing and then taking memory, that's that's good. What else did you you look at after the clothes? Um, I was honestly, this was probably where I would move into like financial minimalism. So I was trying to figure out what am I spending money on that I can extract from you know spending money on that could just go somewhere else so you know after looking at my bank statements i was eating out a little bit too much you know still still eat out but just not as much okay. um you know and and i was spending money on on clothes a lot that i wasn't really wearing you know i would go to the i would go to the i was the type of spender where i would go to the mall just to go hop up in express but oh i like that shirt i'm gonna buy that yeah. oh, i'm gonna buy that you know but now i have to legit have a reason right to purchase something. it's not like oh i'm gonna just buy it because i like it it's like okay am i gonna be wearing that soon am i gonna be wearing it every day am i buying it because i'm waiting to wear it somewhere it's like i had to retrain my mind whenever it comes to buying stuff so i started to shift into you know that financial minimalism um once i started decluttering the clothes and stuff like that to really figure out where i could make an impact on my life from that perspective so it was just going down my bank statements making a budget list and just figuring out you know where can i allocate these new funds and and switch some things around because like you know growing up black you know in the culture you know we 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 are the main consumers you know what i'm yeah. saying we, we, we are buy. the consumer we if they try to get somebody to buy they try to get you they try to get yes, us we buy stuff. Buy. so you know i had to revert from that mentality like if I go to the mall, I can go just to grab something to eat. I could just go because I'm bored. I don't have to buy something. I don't have to right. leave with bags in my hand. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I had to think about that. But then I also had to think about what else was causing me to spend. Like I was a, uh, I was a pay yourself type of spender. You know, I was like, oh, I got a promotion. I'm going to go buy me this since I got a promotion. Or I, I accomplished this. Like I was making excuses for me to make these purchases in order to feel better about the purchase, even though I didn't want to do it. So I had to try to train myself to, you know, like it's nothing wrong with splurging here and there, yeah. but you know, you gotta, you gotta figure out what excuses are making you spend more than what you need to be spending. So I would say, yeah, financial minimalism was this, the next step for sure. Yeah. It's funny you mentioned that because um, what I hear is the, like the value and the utility went up on the stuff that you did buy. So for me, um, like you said, like there was a time when I was, I was that same guy going to the malls, all that type of stuff. And I would actually think there were people, if I walked around that mall too many times that they'd be like, damn, this dude been here for a minute. He ain't bought Jack. <laughs> like <laughs> he ain't got no bread. There's judgment. I'm, I'm feeling the eyes. I'm like, dude, you just seen the person or the people that work there. They looking at you like, Man, you ain't on nothing, dog. <laughs> like, so at least get a, get get a, get one bag, buy one token bag, and so I'm like, man, I've been here 30, 45 minutes. Let me buy something from somebody right. to show that hey, I'm a um, I'm a consumer. But I did see that 
I started getting real specific on the stuff that I did buy. So I wouldn't, again, I wouldn't buy uh, five, seven different watches. I knew I wanted one, you know what I'm saying, one or two good watches. So I spent the money for, you know what I'm saying, quality watches. And that's what I wear. I got my one for like, okay, kind of casual. You might kick it. And then I got one that's a little bit higher level that, you know what I mean, when you're really trying to. Yeah, when you try yeah. to. <laughs> like you said, you you about to you know say this the this the night man you you walk in you want people to kind of catch that little flicker off off the eye <laughs> <laughs> yeah but you don't need twelve of them you know what I mean? right, because right. how often does that happen and so mm -hmm. I know the stuff that I buy I really want and it lasts a lot longer the same thing like if somebody saw saw me they were like yeah you got a little time wallet I was like what I just but I just so happen to like the brand. But I'm like, I use that. I use it a lot differently, but I definitely use that a lot, and I try to take care of it for a while. Um, so, yeah, it's the value, um, that was something that even if you watch the movie in Netflix that they were talking about, what value are you getting from what you're buying? Or are you just kind of <laughs> just out there splurging? Go ahead. And yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that because a lot of things with minimalism is tackling what you want versus what you need. You know what I'm saying? If you need a wallet, like you said, it's okay to buy a wallet that's going to last you a good time because that's yeah. what you need. Like, you don't need, like, I, I'm a firm believer, like, hey, if my wallet breaks tomorrow and I need a wallet that's going to last me the true test of time, I'm going to go out and find me a wallet that I know that's going right. to last me through the true test of time. If it costs me a good little penny, hey, that's, I'm willing to spend it on that because I'm not going to be buying no more wallets. <laughs> yeah, not for a while. And I'm yeah. like, if I have to replace this thing every other month because it was flabby or whatever, mm -hmm. I might as well spend the money anyway. You know yes. what I mean? So exactly. Um, exactly. It, it's really, it's definitely really important. And that's one thing that I, I found. Because like I said, I wouldn't, I haven't gotten myself all the way to the, because I just seen some stuff and I'm like, man, I don't even know how you sleep at night. You know what I mean? <laughs> With some, some of these people. I'm like, you yeah. look peaceful. Don't get me wrong. Like, you, you look very zen and you got the music yeah. going on in the background. But I'm like, dude, nah, you ain't got nothing, nothing in your house. It's always dark there. Like, come on, man. Uh, like, give me something. So um, that was one thing that I'm like, man, what, what are you... Like for me, the values, I try to make sure everything I'm doing has more of a functional purpose when it comes to things to help keep myself in check. Uh, and then obviously I'm married. So, I mean, you know how it is when you start integrating women into your life. <laughs> like minimalism, hate that, hate that, hate that. Oh, oh. <laughs> that, ain't, that ain't necessarily they, they cup of tea, but like there are ways that you can, you know what I mean, it, it integrates like you don't yes. like you said if you're not eating out you got five six days worth of food you're gonna throw away something whereas i might have ate out but i might eat that eat some leftovers on the next couple of days so i'm not that same 20 bucks well i really spent it over three days not i'm spending 20 bucks a day you know what I mean? so that's a lot different don't waste the food like there are some things like i'll never understand why people how you can consciously <laughs> throw away food like that that's just not me. And I, I really think my mom gonna pop out somewhere if she ever saw me throw it, throw it away food. Like, really? This is what right. we are? So, so you too, so you just got it like that. <laughs> so uh, that's that's uh that's challenging. What are the what are the ways that you said because I know you mentioned some things that you like, look, I'm I'm not really going down that path. What what are some of the things that you like eh, that probably didn't fit my particular lifestyle? Yeah, I mean, honestly, I think when you the grand scheme of things, sometimes when you look at minimalism, you just see a certain look, you know, like it just looked like there's not much in somebody home. They own, like you said earlier, one black shirt, one pair of pants, different things like that. People people confuse minimalism with the look than actually what it is. So I was like, I'm trying to see exactly what it is. Forget what the look is. I'm trying to see exactly what it is. So um, for me, certain things I'm like. I need to live comfortably. So I know like I'm not about to be a person that's don't have nothing in my home. You know, I, my house is pretty minimal, but I still need a couch. I still need yeah. a, nice, a nice bed. You know, I still like to dress well. So I still need some type of threads to make me feel like who I am. Uh -huh. You know, like I'm not getting rid of 
not having like more than two or three pair of shoes. I can't just walk around with one pair of shoes. Like, so it's certain things like that where I'm like, I can't do that. Um, you know, I, I'm like, I'm not the type where I could just ride around in a 95 Honda, you know, like, really? I need, you know, I need, I need, cause I'm a, I grew up being a car guy. My dad, oh, okay. my dad was, um, he was a, a car mechanic, so I always grew up around cars. So I was okay. like, you know, if I if I have to drive my car every single day, right, and I gotta go to point A to point B, I want to enjoy the ride. I want to enjoy okay. being in the car. I, if I'm taking a road trip, I'm like I'm comfortable. So yeah, that 9500 Honda, you might have a question depending <laughs> on how far that trip go take you. Exactly. Again, flashback to when you in, in college, shoot the road trips. You be like, man, we we might get to the party, but how are we gonna get home? Or right, something's right. gonna happen. That, but that's interesting. I, I I tell you, I'm the same way. Like with my with my wife. Well, once she became my wife, the the level of safety kind of went up for me. I was like, I feel bad if this girl, and especially now having a, a little daughter, but I'm like, I don't, I love my wife, but I don't think she's going to do well at night on the side of the road, you right. know, a highway. <laughs> like, I, I don't even want that situation. What if I'm, you know what I'm saying, gone? Like, it's, I need to know that if you're driving somewhere, you, you got a quality, safe vehicle <laughs> that I can depend on. It's like, okay, if you get hit, you're gonna be you're gonna be safe. I need to know. So I'll I'll spend a little little more like to you said for that for that quality experience for her uh to ensure that I'm like okay while you out there hey Dude. we can you can get yeah you know what I mean because I'm not the I, I don't like that that the change in tire stuff I will pay and get it done but I'm not the guy to call with man I'm like man you might God, don't you got triple A or whoever? Let me know what, what they say. I can come there. Support. <laughs> yeah, I stand next to you while they doing it. You know what I mean? But hey, no, nah, that ain't me. <laughs> like I, I can't do the bang. I'm sorry. I know my <laughs> skill set. I stay in my skill set. So hey, yo, yeah. So so you you got a car history. I got car history, and it's bad. But yours seems like it's a better better experience. So you grew up. He he made a lot of car. He he fixed on a lot of cars, and so you yeah. value the the car driving experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've always been. I always like cars, like motorcycles, like motor okay. vehicles. Like I, that's always been something. Like I feel like if I didn't care about cars, and that would be taken away from me as a person. So I'm like, well. I can't get rid of that, you know. What right. I'm saying so. It ain't like I own a bunch of cars. I only got one car, but you know, it, it's definitely, you know, not in the minimalist range as right. people say. You know, why yeah. you don't got a Prius or why you don't have this or that. Right. Like, a car is a car to me. If it's gonna get you point A to point B, right? A car, you, you, however you have, whatever makes you comfortable. Yeah, um, I've been on both sides of that camp for four four wheels to get you there. Uh, cause I, I drive a little bit older vehicle. It's only older cause we keep changing years every year. But, um, that was one thing that I pulled up one, one day and a car was sitting next to me. Uh, I think it was like a new Mercedes on the left. And then there was another car on the side that was like that Honda you talking about. And he was kind of struggling a little bit and I was just sitting there in the middle and I was like, dad, all these cars do the same thing. <clears throat> Like it, it, they all start up and all that, you know. What I mean, you can have your jokes like the one on the right might he, he might struggle to start up, but it, he gonna start up and he gonna get you where you're going. But then, if you ever ridden in, uh, I mean, a Tesla, if you've ever driven and ridden in an Audi, if you've ever driven and ridden um, in some of the newer Mercedes and um, the maybe you know, say all these different things, <clears throat> you'll. That speaks to that whole, what do you want your driving experience to be? And that's what they're selling. They know the car functionally does the same thing as everybody else. But they're like, hey, this is what we're giving you when you're in this car. So if you're um, Lexus and Mercedes, all that, you, there are certain things each one of those brands offer you when you're driving um, that that's what you're that's honestly what you're paying for that's why their brand is is that that level like tesla is the tech you know what i mean it's the high tech you know what i mean this thing will drive itself you know what i mean it'll, it'll get you where you where you're going audi is safety and um audi is more state safety style precision uh and tech mercedes is more like the grandfather of luxury um 
Lex yeah. is they're trying to get there, but they can't get their technology up to compete. Right. <laughs> um, that's true. It's, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, like each one of those BMW. That's that's the one I forgot, but uh, uh like four. we're reading like a X3, I think it is. That that joker is powerful. <laughs> so you know what I mean. If you're you know what I'm saying, if you're like a guy who you know what I'm saying, real want to be manly man, like that's a good <laughs> vehicle for you to get in for that luxury feel. That gives you a luxury feel, but you still got that power that you're looking for. That you want your vehicle to be like shoot the wind blowing too hard. You know you're going right through that joke. So <laughs> yeah, like you want something that cuts through. So that that kind of. Makes it interesting. So we talked a little bit about you know your living at home, uh, and just to touch on real quick. So if you were in the market, if you know you're gonna buy, how do you think minimalism will affect your buying purchase? Just in general. Yeah, like for like if you were gonna buy a home, how do you think how you look at things? How do you think that will affect affect that purchase? Yeah, well, you know, I would look at because honestly, a lot of times we look at things especially like homes you just think about oh i want a home i want a big home i want this right. but now it's like i need what's practical for me right my life right now so right now you know i can get by with a three bedroom i can get by with a two bedroom so i don't need a gigantic house you know it would probably be nice to have one but you know it's just more so about what's practical for me what what the space is looking like um you know i feel like a lot of times with <clears throat> especially with our culture, we get stuck in the, in the sense of we have to look a certain type of way you right. know, for others. You know, if you don't got a big <laughs> home, a two story home, you ain't yeah. doing it. You, know, like, yeah, you, you but, ain't doing it. You ain't doing it like, at all. <laughs> but like, for me, it's just more so like, is it practical for my life and where I'm at right now? Right. You know, so that's what I like. I'm actually about to start looking to purchase a home pretty soon. So that's what I'm looking for. Just, you know, it being practical, you know, the needs that I the needs that I have will it just secure those needs? That's yeah. it. Nothing yeah, more, it. nothing less. <laughs> yeah, that that's a it's an interesting thing. Like anybody who gets out into that search, like every home is cut so many different ways. And so you can like on if you look in the web, you're like, oh man, this thing is three thousand square feet. And then you get there, you're like, man, the, the you got this big old living room. You got one couch. You're like. Well, what am I gonna do with that space? Or the ceiling right. was real tall. Like me, that was my big pet peeve. I'm like, I don't want no tall ceiling. I'm like, who finna clean that? I'm not finna <laughs> clean it. Like, who finna get up there? I mean, I gotta pay somebody to do that. You just cost me a bill just so I can say I got three thousand square feet. Whereas you can get eighteen hundred, you can get even twenty two, twenty six hundred, and it be cut. You know what I mean? Where they functionally use the space, and you'd be like, that. Well, I really only need two rooms, but because of the price point and because of how this thing is built, I'm getting more functionality in the home um, that, you know what I'm saying, can make it, make a break. And I think people, uh, and that was something discussing me, again, me and my wife have, because at first she was looking at, hey, it's only 3,000. I'm like, yeah, but what can you do with it? You know what I mean? Right. And then obviously it's a home, right? So the main thing for me was, I'm supposed to change some of the stuff that I'm living now. So if there are issues that I have living now, closet space or whatever the, the case may be, and then I just pay an extra couple hundred thousand dollars more and I still got the same problem. How did, yeah. how did that, like, where did this or, make sense? All the, all to try to impress people that might come once a year or me and my wife go back and forth. I'm like, you want to have, all this extra space for family to come maybe two, three times a year. Maybe they'll come more once you get it. But I'm like, let's be honest. We ain't running no holiday in. It's not like they down the street. You know what I mean? No, nah, they, they right. three times. Nah, I'm not doing that. I'm doing that for my comfort. <laughs> and, and if in the process of me meeting my needs, I'm able to offer you a couch, a, a comfortable bed, I'll do that. No problem. You know what I mean? But I'm not going out with you in mind. Like, you might come by more this year. No. Nah. Right. And then yeah. you ain't helping me with the mortgage. So, like, how, how is that? Yeah, so, <laughs> like, they, they, how does that, how does that factor? So, yeah, that was, um, that living, that living space and getting that mindset of, it's, it's value. Minimalism is, is a value proposition. And we talk about, uh, and it was weird 
but you mentioned the financial minimalism thing. And one of the things like your, your bank statement, just like your credit report, but more so your bank statement, because that's where you really spend your money. That will tell you what you value. If I can, you know, say if I'm ever in somebody's house or if I'm, you know, saying ever around them, I can pretty much tell what the person values. But if I if you tell me what your money, what you spend your money on, oh, I know what you value. I don't care what you know what I'm saying? you say. I'm like, no, if you if you like shoes, own it. You know what I mean? You, you like shoes. But if you do like shoes and you know you like shoes, what is something that you're like, eh, I don't really think too much about. You know what I mean? Maybe I don't need an iPhone plus the shoes. Maybe I, you know, say I get a, a smaller phone. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. You know, say where you're going to give up something, something should lessen in your life because everything isn't important. You know what I mean? That's, that's like, that's like work. You know what I mean? If somebody said, Oh, we got 17 priorities. You know what I'm saying? We want you to do. I'm like, well, that's a good, that's a good idea to have, but um, I'm going to probably give you one or two. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> which one of two are most important <laughs> most important rank them because <laughs> yeah. you you ain't got 17 important things that, that's impossible <laughs> or you got bigger problems and i need to be having a different discussion with you <laughs> that is true yeah. so uh one of the last thing i want to touch on because i know uh you're in the mecca you're in the mecca uh there in atlanta and you're, mm -hmm. you're out there you're, you're doing lifestyle how does minimalism or these behaviors affect your dating, courting life? Does it ever come up or have you ever seen a conflict a little bit um, when just speaking with a uh, young lady? Um, I can see where that could become an issue if there's a serious relationship brewing. But, you know, I feel like honestly, like I can't really force that lifestyle on anybody and right. I can't expect for them to accept that lifestyle is, is mine. But, you know, if they understand and willing to listen and understand, like, you know, he kind of know what he talking about. I would expect right. that they would incorporate a few things in their life if things got serious. But, you know, in Atlanta, it's the flex culture, you know, so, right. you know it's people flexing and doing all this here and there, which is OK to do. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Yeah. But which possible, speaks to your discipline. That's what yeah. I'm like. <laughs> if ever you got challenges, or you, if ever you was gonna have peer pressure, you're right in the in the middle of, of peer pressure. Like you don't even have to go far. <laughs> it's just right. like, uh, like I'm like, man, I go to Atlanta. I just be prepared to open up my pocket. Like just mentally, I'm like, I'm sold. Like I'm like, I I just know, cause dude, I went to dinner that one time. And I think we had a salad and, and a piece of meat and somewhere or another it's a bill was like 200 bucks. I'm like, wait a second. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, dude, I had to go out and look at the side of the restaurant. I'm like, dude, y'all need to be telling people <laughs> before yeah. before we walk in, like, what's going on? You slid this to me like it was, I mean, I paid it, but I was just like, you you just gonna give this to me? Man. You could have told me, like, and I knew something was because <laughs> me you ain't had that on there. I'm like, dude, y'all just surprising people with me. <laughs> y'all yeah. just going back and guessing. But no, you're in you're in peer pressure. That place is hard. And and I mean, when it when it comes to dating in Atlanta, you don't, and it don't even have to be in Atlanta. It could just be in in the world in general. Like people kind of look at you and figure out, try to figure out where they could stack you in a in a ranking of status like me if i go out you know i'm not i don't have the most flashiest things or anything like that like i'm probably wearing a sweatshirt or maybe a basic tee might have some jays on might have some nikes on like i don't scream like oh this person doing this and that you know <laughs> like the typical person that might be going out in atlanta they want you to know that they got money they want you to know that they got some type of status and things mm -hmm. like that so like for me i feel like a woman probably would think that I don't have too much going on. Yeah. Let's go look at see what kind of I'm getting out of. <laughs> that, but, that, that's a concern. But hey, if, if she want to talk to you under those pretenses, that might be that might not be a bad thing. Exactly. Exactly. You, you thought it was low. No, nah, man. I I appreciate the the discussion. You opened it up your home. Uh, talking about those personal beliefs, I really um. I really, again, enjoy watching, um, just being a part of your journey and being able to watch your journey as you're going through all these different things. Um, guys, share share with you. So I know you're, you know, say Corey Jones on Instagram and Facebook. Um, is there any other places that you know, people can connect there with you? 
Um, honestly, I feel like every platform is like you would think like as a content creator, all your platform is like cohesive, but right. like YouTube is like my main form of content. Instagram is just mainly me just sharing my life. TikTok is me just having fun. Facebook is for family. So okay. whichever one you're trying to see, yeah, <laughs> I would just recommend YouTube because that's where you probably get the most value, honestly. But yeah. if you really want to follow me along, I would say YouTube and Instagram could probably be the place to the two places to follow me if you want to support. Yeah, man, it's um, it, I tell you, I every every Saturday on my on my runs that became my new thing. You replaced these uh these money guys I was watching. I'm, I had to move them move them up in the week. I'm like, hey, uh, I I, I, I dig this. No, I definitely appreciate it, guys. If you're watching on YouTube, please uh, take a moment, hit that like button, so, uh, subscribe, and like I said, I drop uh, Corey's info below. Corey, we're gonna hang up a little bit uh, backstage, but thank you again for coming, guys. Thank you for listening. Can't wait to see you guys. Well, next week is Thanksgiving, but the week after. So enjoy your holiday. Uh, but we'll see you back here real uh, soon.